One thing that came out of our discussion of division was that in order to decide what should be the remainder, we were supposed to be able to compare the remainder to the polynomials that we were dividing by. And by compare, we have to decide whether the remainder is small enough. And now, in order to compare polynomials, we will begin by comparing monomials. So let's R be a multivariate polynomial ring over the field K. And alpha will denote a tuple of n integers, natural numbers, so I include 0 as a natural number. And then uh, we will write x to the alpha to denote the monomial x1 to the alpha 1 dot dot xn to the alpha n, where alpha 1 through alpha n are the components of this tuple alpha. So clearly monomials are in bijection with these n tuples of natural numbers alpha, where from alpha we go to x to the alpha, and from x to the alpha we read the exponents. So in order to uh, compare uh, monomials, we just have to compare tuples of natural numbers. Okay, so let's be a little bit pedantic and talk about what it means to have an order on a set. So we have a set X. An order is going to be a subset of X cross X, and it's going to record elements, let's say A, B, where A is less than B. That's our uh, idea. And it should satisfy the following. For no element in X should A, A be inside of a, P. That means A is not smaller than itself. And if A, B is inside of P, that means A is, is less than B, then B, A is not in P. So that A less than B implies B is not less than A. Finally, we would like a transitivity. So if A is smaller than B and B is smaller than C, then A should be smaller than C. Okay, once we choose an ordering, we typically write A less than B if AB is inside of P and A less than or equal to B if A is less than B or A equals B. So far, so good. Now, uh, we would like to add an additional structure once we are talking about orders on this set of integers. Because uh, I can add integers, there is this additional structure, and I would like my ordering to be homogeneous. So this homogeneity condition means that whenever I have alpha less than beta, uh, alpha beta tuples as before, and I translate the tuple alpha and beta by the same tuple gamma, then the order relation is preserved. So when it comes to monomials, it says the following. If I have x of alpha less than x of beta, that's by definition going to mean alpha less than beta, then So the multiplication of monomials does not change the ordering on the monomials induced from their exponents. So we need uh, one more structure, which is the following, that I should be able to compare any two elements. So I should be able to compare any two monomials. And so at an order So this an order is said to be total ordering if for any pair of elements in x, either x equals y or x is less than y or y is less than x. And now that completes the definition of a monomial ordering. So a monomial ordering is an order induced on the set of monomials through a total homogeneous ordering on the set of integer tuples. So what we are accustomed to do for univariate polynomials is to write a polynomial as a sum of monomials of decreasing degree. And now we can do the same thing if we have a monomial ordering on a multivariate polynomial ring. So take a monomial ordering and for any polynomial we're going to write it as a sum of monomials of decreasing size. So 
So if we do this, writing the polynomial as a decreasing sum of monomials, we're going to define the leading monomial of f to be this first term appearing here. And just like univariate polynomials, we can now say that a polynomial is smaller than another polynomial if its leading monomial or its leading term is smaller than the leading term of the other polynomial. So here, when I'm comparing the leading terms, so they're just monomial times a constant. So this constant we ignore and we just compare the monomials. This is no longer an order on the polynomials because two polynomials can have the same leading term and be different. Therefore, this assumption that uh, given two elements, either one is smaller than the other, or the second one is smaller than the first, or they're equal. So these three co conditions uh, are not satisfied for this comparison. Let's take the following baby example with a single variable. We're going to take the obvious ordering on natural numbers, and then this is going to give us the following. So we get 1 is less than x, x is less than x squared, and so on. Uh, we get the usual ordering in the univariate polynomial ring. And a polynomial will be smaller than another one if its degree is smaller than its, uh, the other degree of the other one. Now let's uh, define some orderings on higher dimensional polynomial rings. So we're going to start with the uh, classical one, which is the lex ordering or lexicographic ordering. The lexicographic ordering is usually referred to as lex for short. So here's what we do. We say take alpha and beta in these uh, intervals of n, and we're going to say alpha is lexicographically smaller than beta if the following holds. So if in the sequence of integers beta minus alpha, your n tuple of integers, if the first non-zero term is positive, then you are going to say beta is larger than alpha. So you ignore the terms to the right of this positive term. So this is called the lexicographic ordering because this is exactly how a dictionary orders words. And if you view the variables as letters, uh, this is more or less what's happening. For example, the x0 squared times x1 is going to be greater than x0 times x1 times x2. So here the sequence of integers will be 2, 1, 0. This will be 1, 1, 1. And the difference is going to be 1, 0, minus 1. So the first term appearing here is positive, uh, first term starting from the left. Therefore, we have this inequality. But something interesting about lexicographic ordering is that it really very strongly prefers the first variables, uh, even more so than degree. So what ends up happening is that if you start ordering, let's say x0 cube would be larger than x0 squared, for sure, uh, and this would be greater than x0, but this x0 would beat any power of x1. For example, it would be beat x1 cubed, x1 squared, and so on. And x1 would beat any power of x2. So that uh, the lexicographic ordering does not care about the degree. It looks at it, it wants you to have as many of the first letters as possible. First letters, first variables. It, it makes sense also to consider its generalization. So this version graded lexicographic ordering uh, first takes account the degree and then uh, uses the lexicographic ordering. So for alpha, beta, we say alpha is less than beta with respect to this gravlex, um, sorry, graded lexicographic ordering. If, if the sum of the terms in alpha is dominated by the sum of the terms in beta, or 
the sum of terms is equal, so that will be the degree of the corresponding monomial is, uh, are equal. But lexicographically, alpha beats beta. So this time around, we don't have that every power of x0 defeats every power of x1. Instead, we have, for example, x1 cubed would be, be, uh, beat x0 squared. But x0 squared would still beat x1 squared. So the lexicographic ordering is used uh, very commonly. Graded lexicographic ordering is not used as much. But we use another version of uh, this graded lexicographic ordering. It's called the graded reverse lexicographic ordering. This is the one that's used uh, quite often. So the graded reverse lexicographic ordering is called Grevlex, as for short. In practice, when studying varieties, when you use lexicographic ordering, you uh, can extract a lot of information from an ideal, but that means there's some kind of preservation of entropy. That means you have to spend a lot of energy finding it. With a Grevlex, it gives you slightly less information, uh, which means it's much faster to find, and quite often uh, the information you can glean from a Gravelex ordering will be sufficient for uh, pretty much any question you ask. Therefore, when you're fiddling around in your computer, you should first set Gravelex ordering on your polynomials. So given two tuples, we say alpha is less than beta with respect to Gravelex ordering if one of the two holds either the sum of terms is alpha in alpha is less than sum of terms in beta, or sum of terms in alpha equals sum of terms in beta, and in beta minus alpha, the rightmost non-zero term is negative. So with the lexicographic ordering, we were looking at the leftmost non-zero term, and we wanted it to be positive. Right now we are looking at rightmost uh, term, and want, we want it to be negative. So let's do an example. First, take x1 squared and x0, x2. So the degrees match, so they're both of degree 2, but this one is 0, 2, 0. This one is 1, 0, 1. So the exponents are these. And when I subtract them, I see that this is going to be 1, minus 1, 2, minus 1. And that means I can uh, compare them with all the orderings that I know. The Gravelex ordering will tell me, that because this last entry is negative, that the left term is greater than the right term. On the other hand, if you were to look at it from uh, the Glex ordering, then it says uh, the first term is negative, therefore the ordering should be the other way around. It says that the rightmost term is greater than the uh, left term. This graded reverse lexicographic ordering is not just the inverse of the graded lexicographic ordering when the degrees match. Uh, here's another example where both of them agree. So for these monomials, the exponent vectors are 1, 1, 0. This one has 0, 1, 1. And the difference is 1, 0, minus 1. So then the Gravelex ordering tells me that this comparison is true. But also, and that, that's because here this is minus 1, but then we look at the first term and see that it's positive, so that the glex ordering, or also the lexicographic ordering, tells me the same thing. For another reason, this time, uh, the same equality holds. That means that the glex ordering and grevlex ordering are really different, so they're not just the opposites of one another, there is a more interesting structure. In this section, we discussed what an ordering should be, we put some conditions on it, there was a total ordering, there was a condition on homogeneity that gave us monomial orderings, and we met uh, three orderings. So one of them is lexicographic, uh, graded lexicographic, graded reverse lexicographic, and these are the ones that are commonly used, but of course there are many other orderings that you could choose, I mean the definition is uh, quite broad, and uh, they would all influence the performance of the kind of operation that you are going to do. We will not uh, do study this in great generality, but right now we have had the foundations to study polynomial division now that we have ordering in place. We will do this in the next section.